Recently when we reviewed our Arnon Nitro Fury from Sapphire, we didn't expect the price of the Arnon Nano to be dropped to the same level. Now when we did the review of the Nitro Fury, we compared it to the GTX 980 because that was the card that it was comparably priced to. But immediately upon release of the review, AMD announced the drop in the R9 Nano down to $499, which put it on par, if not slightly less expensive than the R9 Nitro. And a lot of people immediately went to, wouldn't this be the better buy? Well, because it's full VGXT, it's all 4096 Supreme processors, it's a smaller form factor, it is air-cooled, and it uses a single 8-pin PCI Express slot, and it's got the connectivity that you would expect. So wouldn't this be the logical choice? Before we jump into the benchmarks, let's talk about a couple things that keep this card a little bit different. The, the Nitro Fury was easily overclockable. This one, you're really not going to get that out of it. You're going to get what you get. It's a great card. I absolutely love it, but the reality is, you, you got to remember the differences here. This is a six inch card. It's got a single fan, um, vapor chamber heat sink. The Nitro is a foot long card. It's twice the length. It has three times the fans. It's got three fans on it. It's they're, they're very different in the sense that they are targeting different things. See, this is a small form factor, whereas the Nitro is like, you got room, you got power, let's pump it. Now, let's jump into these, these benchmarks and take a look at the performance parity. So for the video, what we did was, because everybody mentioned pushing it to 50%, or plus 50 on the power limit, to maintain as close to that target speed as possible you can. So that's what we did for this set of benchmarks, but on the site we're going to upload some charts showing stock performance, stock versus stock, and then what kind of results we get out of it. Now to run through the test bench real quick, we've got an i7-4770K clocked at 4.2 gigahertz, 8 gigs of Radeon Gamer RAM running at 2400 megahertz, and on the Z87 Hero motherboard as well as a 1200 watt power supply and storage is handled by a Crucial LMX 100 512 gig SSD and a Seagate, a 4 terabyte SSHD from Seagate. Now that we've gotten the basic specs out of the way, let's take a look at the results.
All right, so in the end, what we see by pushing this sucker to a plus 50 on the power limit, and that's it, no real overclocking, just moving a slider over, you get roughly the same performance as a stock Nitro. But the biggest difference being the Nitro is significantly quieter. Um, it's a bit cool, well, it's a rough, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit cooler. And honestly, the power limit or the power savings, it's actually using less power on the stock Nitro as opposed to the balls to the wall um, Nano. Now, on the site, you'll be able to see that when this is run at stock, it's not a whole lot slower than it is. So personally, me, if you're running a Nano, I don't see the benefit, especially if you're leaving the stock cooler on it and running it at plus 50 because with the stock cooler, it gets noisy. Now, it may not, you know, the small numbers, but every few decibels, it practically doubles in the noise level. So, so it's something to very, keep very much in mind. Now, if you're at 1080p or 1440, uh, you, it's going to come down to which card do you want more? Do you want the bigger card that runs a little bit cooler or do you want the smaller card that is it's really cool. I mean, this is a really neat piece of technology, but I have, I still stand by my original assumption is that it, if you want a nano because of size, because you just want something really cool, that's fine. It's a really good card. But when it comes to straight up performance to the dollar, I would pick the nitro over the nano any day of the week. But that's been my assumption. Let me hear what you guys have to think about it. If you agree, if you disagree, if you want to, well, have a discussion. Feel free to leave the comments down in the comment section below and catch our article going up later on WCCFTech.com. And thank you so much, guys. We'll catch you in the next one.